Hello! In this tutorial we're going to talk about nested loops. I'm going to do nested while loops because when it comes to loops I prefer while loops. There's no reason you couldn't do nested fours or intels or anything like that. So I'm starting off with just basic form here. Form's got a button called button go and I've got a list box called list items. As you will see a list box isn't the perfect solution for this but uh, if we're going to try and get through this quickly it'll do. So I'm going to double click on the go button, head on over to code design, and I'm going to have two loops. And I said I'm going to use while loops, and so if I'm using while loops, I'm going to need to create a counter. And if I'm going to have two loops, I'm going to need two counters. So I am going to dim i as integer, and I'm going to give that a value like we usually start at zero when we're iterating through a list box. I'm going to start at one. I'm going to be creating a times table here. So one times one, one times two, one times three, that kind of deal. And so I'm going to have a second counter known as J. That's the convention. And I'm going to start that one at 1. Uh, usually we just use I as our counter. Uh, when we need two counters, you usually say J is your second. If we needed a third, we'd usually call that K. All of, cor of course, there's nothing stopping us from using some kind of other weird name for it. It doesn't have to be a single letter. So now I'm going to start setting up my loops. So while. And here's where I make some decisions. Uh, typically a multiplication table goes to 12, but I don't want to do that. I'm going to go up to 5. All right, so we're going to go 1 times 1, 2 times 2, dot, 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 all the way to 5 times 5. So I know that I'm going to need to increment my value at some point, so I'm just going to increment it right off the bat. And so here's where the nested part comes in. I'm going to have a while loop inside of a while loop. So once we start off, we're going to get in here, i is going to be 1, and then I'm going to start up a new loop inside, and here's the nested portion. So while j is less than 5, notice I've got a while instead of a, inside of a while, and you notice how it's indenting, right? Because these things can get pretty nasty to keep track of if you don't know what you're doing. Well, even people who do know what they're doing make mistakes all the time. So I'm going to increment my j. So presumably, this is kind of a weird thing, this little piece of code right here and I think my list box is called list items, so items dot add. And this little piece that I have right here, which is kind of blank at the point at the moment, is gonna run 25 times. This is gonna run five times. Alright, and this is gonna run five times, which contains that. So really I'm gonna get 25 values. So it's gonna start off saying something like one times one, and it's gonna end by saying something like five times five. Now the problem is I haven't added anything to my list box, so let's add something. And I think that I want to add a string. And so there's going to be some pretty heavy concatenation here. So I'm going to say something like j and concatenate times and concatenate. Um, I'll do i and j just to make it a little more consistent, I think. It doesn't really matter. Concatenate um, equals concatenate i times j. That is pretty nasty looking. What did I mess? There's so many places I could mess this up. Concatenate, concatenate, concat... I think I actually need spaces, which is kind of goofy. And that was the problem. Don't ask me why it can't figure out to put spaces, but it couldn't. So I'm going to run this thing, and it's not going to work, and that's going to be the more interesting part when we talk about why it doesn't work. So I go to run, and I'm going to press my button, and I get 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 2 is 2, 3, 3, 4. That couldn't be much more wrong, so I made an unintended mistake. It's I and J, so sorry, I, I was just looking at the I. I want to do J. Now I can run this thing. Apologies. So we get 1 times 1, 1 times 2, 1 times 3, 1 times 4. There's no scroll bar here, it just ended. So one of the first mistakes I made is I did while i is less than 5. If I want it to include 5, well, I'm going to need to get an or equal to, and I'm going to need an or equal to here. That's not going to solve all our problems. Now I've got a scroll bar, and you can see it's including 5. But kind of an interesting thing happening here, and this is just classic mistake 1. So my i is 1 when we start off, so I go inside of here. This keeps executing, which is what generates that right there. At some point, j gets up to 5, and then we drop out of this loop. We add 1 to i. i becomes 2, and so we come in here, which is fine. But what is j? 
right? The reason we got past this point in the code is because j got up to 5, and it's still 5. So presumably this part here, this first while loop, is probably happening 5 times, but there's this idea that we kind of, we maxed out j. So at the end of that while, if I stop debugging, at the end of that while, I need to reassign j to 0, so to reset it, so to speak. And this should take care of everything. It looked like a much more difficult problem to solve than what it was, but that should take care of things. Now, if I run it, uh, you can see it's just gross, and it worked. I mean, you can kind of, you know, I think you can infer that it started at 1 times 1 and ended up at 5 times 5, and you can kind of see what's happening there. The problem, just like I said in the beginning, was that a list box doesn't lend itself to this very well. Um, but we'd like to have columns, right? Every multiplication chart you've ever seen has columns and rows and headings, and this doesn't have those. There are some fixes. None of them are very pretty. I would put them in this video, but the fact of the matter is it would just add a couple minutes to the video. So I'm going to call this one good. That is a nested while loop. You could do nested uh, for loops. The idea being, usually you want to execute the inner loop a whole bunch of times, and you know, more specifically, this many times. Don't forget to reset your counter for the inner loop. That's probably the moral of the story. Thanks for watching. Um, just on another note, I will show you how to fix this output. It's a really, it's a kind of a bubble gum and duct tape kind of solution, but I'll show you how to fix the output in the next video and it'll be a couple minutes long. But this is probably the one you wanted, so thanks for watching again.